This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time is un- is unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze the special things into your schedules is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters for you so you can do more of it. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash IDK today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash IDK. Horse racing. Basketball. Tennis. Which one involves a racket? Wow. You might find out, and I don't know about that, with tennis. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's me, Jim Jeffries, or as I'm now called by my professional name, Tennis. Uh, I'm here with Jack and Forrest. Uh, we, 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 that made me laugh. That yeah, good. we've already recorded the podcast. We've come back to do the intro, so I already know what's about to happen. Too excited. Too excited. I'm excited. Everybody for you knows. We, we label yeah, yeah. the episodes. You already label it. So I can tell you right now, because we're recording this before, it's the country of Vienna. But in a second, <laughs> I'm going to guess. Wait, the country? of Vienna. He, uh, of Austria. He clearly did not I learn. Learned, I learned nothing. <laughs> Croissants. Hey, hey, oh, uh, you wait don't for that spoil bit. No, 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 edit that out. Edit that out. Anyway, it turns out they were on the wrong side of the war. Which war? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> there uh, were a lot of wars, to be fair. Um... Da, 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 da. Oh, you got some shows coming. You're going to be in South Africa next week. I am going to be in South Africa, or they call it the Vienna of Africa. <laughs> Did yeah, you say uh, that? Uh, I mean, probably. I mean, I'll be in South Africa. Historical Afri- similarities. I'll be in South Africa. <laughs> I'm going to be in South Africa. I'll be telling jokes to the South Africans. One of the shows, I believe, is very close to sold out, and the other one, the Pretoria. other one, we're adding seats to. So one nice. of them was sold out. We just added some seats. So let's still um, take it. Come along. Not Come many. along. Not many. Low ticket alert. Low, Low ticket, ticket warning. Low ticket boop, warning. Boop, boop. Uh, May 2nd, in, you're going to be in Spokane. May 3rd, Denver, Colorado. And May 4th, Denver, Colorado. Yeah, Extra show. Two shows. Uh, and May 17th, Charleston, South Carolina. May Bring 18th, your tiki torches. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. <laughs> and uh, May 30th, San Francisco, and so on. Bring your tiki torches. There's dates. <laughs> <laughs> There's dates on jimjeffries.com. <laughs> if you go on there and Atlantic City and Westbury is still on there, do not buy tickets for those. Those will be delayed to another time. Uh, but there's what shows this? The, the ones from that there's on here Atlantic City and Westbury in New York you're going to be in Australia they know those are oh yeah they're, 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 they're being they're moved Don't they got to they right. fix your website here but yeah, go to jimjeffries.com and Jack, uh, take a get onto that yeah, it'll be sure fixed by the time know, right when we wrap uh, go to my website foreshot.net I have shows at April 24th and April 26th at the Factory Theatre in Sydney, Australia please mm. come out I'll be doing like an hour I guess yeah uh, I'm at the Sydney Comedy Festival there and then May 1st or the 4th I'm at the Comics Lounge in Melbourne, and May 11th, Netflix is a joke festival. I'm co-headlining with our friend JJ Whitehead. Woo. All tickets available on my website or my Instagram. Come out there, ID Cat Podcast on Instagram. Um, we, I, th- I think we'll probably have merch by the time this comes out. We have the designs. Who yep. knows? So we should have the merch, and we have new T-shirts and hats and stuff like that coming up. Um, anything else you want to say? No. No, I want to get started on this podcast. Okay, please welcome our guest, Stephen Beller. G'day, Stephen Beller. Now it's time to play. Yes, though. Yes, though. Yes, though. Yes, though. Judging a book by its cover. Right, well, Steve has a map of what what I, w- I probably think is some, some made up part of the world. <laughs> I can't really tell what part yeah. of the world that is. Is it is that is that the top of Western Europe heading down into Italy or something? I don't know what that is. Uh, what do you reckon that is, is Jack? Hmm. The video went away. Uh <laughs> I have no freaking it's idea. It's Mexico, you can't tell. No, it's Cancun should not decide. <laughs> That's uh <laughs> Is it? It's no. Mordor. <laughs> no, it's right. Middle Earth. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. But is, is it maps? Are we talking about maps? Steve? It's a map. Yeah. It's a map. Yeah. No, we're, a not, map. we're not talking about maps. Is, is you're talking about Middle Earth almost. Is your, <laughs> is your subject maps? It's a good one. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> maps would one. be a good I one. I love maps, but we'll get a map expert at some point. But yeah. no, it's not maps today. Um, okay. Does your subject in, involve science? Hmm. Not really. Not really. Is it the entertainment business? 
<laughs> go back to maps. Go <laughs> back to really. maps. No. Yeah. Yeah, he laughed at the entertainment business. No, he's laughing at us. Um, you want a hint? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, You're on the right track with maps. Is, is, is it, does it involve the world? <sighs> the world, yes. It, it, is, it is part of the real world. Think yes, smaller. It is part Think of the real smaller. world. Yeah, yeah. Think he's smaller. pointing to the map. Oh, is it? Actually, it, if you look over here very closely, there's the actual. It's too Something. grainy. We can't yeah, tell we what can't it is. See it's too uh, grainy. You're it's almost too grainy. from here, Jim. You're almost from here. New Zealand. No, it's no. not New Zealand. <laughs> oh, is it? Is it? Okay, it, it's a riddle that I'm saying. You're almost. Where are you from uh, here? Yeah, where are That's you from? That's true. I'm from Australia. So you're almost from here. Say that name really fast. Austria. There you go. <laughs> so we're doing the country of Austria. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Are we doing the good, the bad, and the ugly of Austria? Or we you can just do whatever doing... you want. And yeah. I, did, I did say that was a map of Western Europe. I was right. Yeah, you were close at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Western Europe, yeah. Uh, Stephen Beller was born in London, England, and educated at Cambridge University. And since 1989, he has lived in the United States. He has written uh, widely on Austrian, Jewish, and Central European history. Or being Austria. His books include A Concise History of Austria... So there you go. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Vienna and the Jews, a cultural history. Oh, I love that band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anti Semitism, a very short introduction. Uh, he's got a lot of books here Democracy and All That Matters. He's also edited and introduced the anthology Rethinking Vienna. His latest book is The Habsburg Monarchy, 1815 19. 18, he is currently an independent scholar residing in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being here, Stephen. All right, Austria. You're very welcome. I'm very happy to be here. Um, and uh, as you want to tell us how you got, how, how do you got to know so much about Austria? Or why did you choose Austria as your center of focus? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, when I was at uh, college, my uh, I was very interested in, in Mahler and Vienna 1900 at the time. And so my, my, my tutor said, um, what would you like to study as for your first essay? And, and I said, oh, uh, how about Vienna, Vienna at the turn of the century, kind of all the cultural stuff and so on and so on forth. And, and I went on for about three minutes and so I'll go on now. Anyway, I'll stop. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and my, my uh, tutor said, well, yes, but what do you want to study? Yeah, well, I said, what, what was happening in Vienna around 1900? And so he said, okay, essay title. What was happening in Vienna around 1900? And oh. it's gone on from there. So, well, I'm a And the other thing is, my mother's half Austrian. My mother is Austrian, was Austrian. Okay. Yeah. So I'm half Austrian. I'm so a big fan India. of uh, Austria. I, I think, uh, look, man, any place where they're selling me a sausage on every corner. Isn't that where he got sick? <laughs> that's, that's got. No, no, no. no, no, no that's no. in Holland. Holland. I, I, uh, but I, I ate the so, sausages I ate many in Austria. Sausages in Vienna, I did not get sick. I no, eat no. so <laughs> many of these things and they've got cheese infused through them and they just give you a fork Kinds and a bit of, of mayonnaise or they just hollow out a bit of bread and they shove the sausage in there. Yeah. So it's all in case. He's a criner. Yeah, Excellent. fucking yeah. the best. No, I know. I the know best. I think about those sausages. Experience. And why can't I have that sausage in America? We People talk go, about it. You got to go down to this butcher, and, and I've tried all these things. I've tried to buy the sausage. It only I don't know why, but the sausage. But I'm not a big fan of the boiled meat meal, oh, which yeah. is like the national Tough, dish. Tougher. They, yeah, they they they, they boil they boil a steak, and you can see why some people are like. And then they have like noodle soup, but it's not noodles. It's just sliced up pancake. In there, and like we we, we wonder why there's a lot of fat fucks well, that come out of Austria. Tafelspitz, yeah, Tafelspitz. Tafelspitz, yes. It was good though. Yes, it was good, but yeah. that's their cuisine, and it doesn't it doesn't look. There's a reason that there's not one in LA. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or Amer I don't think there's one in all of America. Maybe in Cleveland, where all the uh, the people went to reside afterwards. Um, but but. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. That's qu not quite true, Jim, but, you know, there you I've are. watched the guy, the devil next door, the, the bloke who was meant to be the, the demon of Auschwitz or whatever, who went on trial in Israel, and he was found at the Ford Company in Cleveland. Plus, when I'm in Cleveland, th there's more bratwurst and pierogies than anywhere else in the country. There's German bars as far as the eye can oh, see. Oh, that's, so that's West Cleveland. That's, that's yeah, not I East just, Cleveland. Uh, get yeah, it right, Jim. All Cleveland's Cleveland. <laughs> there, there's a restaurant. Uh, is there a good bit and a bad bit? I thought there was just <laughs> Cleveland. 
Is no, it? No, it, it's, I, don't, I don't know. Did you know? Did you know my background? Because my father was from. <laughs> of course he was, <laughs> but he married an Austrian. <laughs> it was a little taste of so, home. So Why do you think I live in America and I date a British <laughs> woman? <laughs> Bit of familiarity. There's just a, there's just a thing on uh, Google that says, "Is Toffel Spitz nice?" <laughs> I like it. I thought it was good, but yeah, I know what you're it, saying. It, it can be with ho- you have to have horseradish with it. Though. Oh no, we oh, had we no, 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 we, we, was, it was good. We had we had one of the elite restaurants of it. Like yeah, it we, was, it, 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 we had the best version. We were of taken it. out by a local from a person from Austria. Okay, that, and we went to a, a high end restaurant. It was very, it was an excellent dinner. It was I, a really good dinner. I have a lot of opinions on Austria, but yeah, and mostly good, <laughs> mostly good. I, I'm a big fan of Austria. All right, well, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna ask Jim Beautiful a place. Ser- series of questions about Austria. At the end of him answering those. Um, uh, Stephen Beller is gonna you're gonna grade him on his accuracy zero oh, through yes. ten. Mm-hmm. Ten's the best. Like grading, grading. Um, uh, Jack's gonna grade him on confidence. I'm gonna grade him on how hungry I am. And at the end of this zero through ten, if you only score zero through ten total, Doctor Oz Tria, get it? No. Oz, Doctor Oz. Yeah, Tria. big bloody leap that one. Yeah, I know. Well, so, the well get ready do. for the next two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eleven through twenty, the Wizard of. Austria. Austria. Good, good. 21 through 30. This one I really had to stretch. Australia. No, Austria, Osborne. Right. Okay. That one wasn't good. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that should have been the Do Austrians, because Australia, Australia gets called Oz because of Australia, we get called Oz. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And then Australians get called Aussies, A U S S I E, comma S. Um, I imagine they could be called Aussies as well. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of fun punny stuff around Vienna where it's just like it's not a question you can ask them. No, but like they have like a T-shirt with like koalas crossed out. You're in the wrong place, yeah. and there's an Australian bar in the middle. Nice. And I, you know, I, yeah. I went to it. Is there a nickname? Because uh, uh, that's not a question. Um, is there a nickname for Austrians? Um, Aussies. That's a good question. Not. That's no, not really. So if, not if British people of. are called Brits yeah. and Aussies are called Aussies and Americans are called Yanks. Austrians. Right. Austrians, Austrians no, that's their the actual, I'm Australian in, in, in and Austrian. Austrian it's Österreicher, right? So it's difficult to kind of shorten that. Fisterhiker. <laughs> Sausage people. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like the beginning of a porn movie. <laughs> yeah, or the end, actually. I think it's Est. <laughs> uh, the, actually, actually, Night Porter was, was filmed in, uh, in uh, I'm not sure you call that a porn movie, but that was filmed in Vienna. Uh, okay. Anyway, um. Okay. First, okay question. first question. By the way, oh. by the way, the, the, you know the old the, there was a T-shirt. You talked about T-shirts. Yeah. And there was a T-shirt around back back when it says there are no kangaroos in Austria. Yeah, yeah. That was the T-shirt. They're it, still selling yeah, yeah. that T-shirt. It, it's it's not true that there are there are a few in in the Schönbrunn Zoo in Vienna. So. Oh, I assume anyway. you'd have some and you'd boil them up in water and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, probably what they said you for tough. We we we. I oh, look. I've eaten kangaroo plenty of times, so I'm not one to talk. Um, <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, I am one to talk. That's my whole thing. <laughs> All right. First question: When was Austria founded as a country? Oh, oh fuck off. <laughs> uh, all right, so how long has it been a country? Yeah. Uh, found it as a country. It's not helping the confidence. Oh, I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, and so Mozart was Austrian. I'm going to I'm going to say 500 years ago. Fuck okay. 500 years ago. 500 years ago. What okay. does Austria's flag look like? Oh, bloody, that's a good one as well. Yeah. Uh, Austria's flag. Austria's flag. I think like I know. I think it's. I believe it's red and white with like a shield. Oh no, that's Poland. Uh so Germany. It has like an eagle in the middle of it, and Actually, I'm going to say know. black, white, and yellow. And what's the significance of the design? Um, love eagles, man. Love eagles. Yeah, if I I didn't get the first bit right, I'm not going to get the second bit yeah, right. You didn't. I just looked it up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who was the first ruler slash leader of Austria? What was their title? Come on, I'm going to deep. I'm dig go, deep. I'm going to go Führer. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to go the title. No, no, it, it would have been a king or queen, uh, uh, Austrian. They they had um, royal families. Yeah. So I'm going to say um, king. And it was a guy called Frank. Who are some notable figures from Austrian history? Mozart, mm-hmm. 
Uh, the Von Trapp family. Yeah. Um, uh, Crocodile Dundee. You're missing a big guy. I feel like guy. there's a big one. There's a really big one you're missing. <laughs> big, oh, Hitler. Yeah, Hitler's Austrian. Good. Yeah. Yeah, Hitler was from there's there. Another, I, there's another big one. He's not a politician. But or they don't have any leader. statues, so I can't remember him. <laughs> uh, <True enough. laughs> Crocodile Dundee, Hitler. Okay. Crocodile Dundee, Hitler. Anymore. And L- lie down on the ca- on the couch, Jim, then think about it. Oh, Zygmunt Freud. There you go. Yeah. Zygmunt yeah. No hint, Stephen. Z- Zygmunt <laughs> Freud. Um, and the Von Trapp family. And if we look at, if, <laughs> yeah. if we look at uh, Maria Von Trapp, right, because yeah. she got married in the end. Bloody homely woman. Yep. Uh, she's no Julie Andrews. Who's who the Von Trapps? Sound, sound of Music. music. Right, now, the Sound right, of Music right. is set in Salzburg, which is in, in Austria. And I have it on fairly good authority that Austrians, yeah. out of pure defiance and being shitty, none of them have seen the film. That's what we were told when we were there. They don't, and I asked it. a few people afterwards, and I referenced it on stage, none of them have fucking seen The Sound of Music, one of the greatest movies of all time. And they don't. And, and it also does so much for their tourism, right? People, yeah. people from all over the world come to spin around on that fucking, on that mountain and then skip around fountains and shit. But none of the Austrians well, I told you it. I used to watch that movie in school all the time. But class was never long enough to see the full movie, so I just saw the, like the beginning. And it was all really nice. I never got to the Nazi part. Oh, I know. It was on this podcast. You said, "Oh, there's Nazis." I'm like, "What? You didn't know there was Nazis?" No, like half the film. Music. What are you yeah, talking about? That's what I'm saying. I didn't uh, see the second half where <laughs> the Nazis were. I only saw the first uh, half. What are some famous landmarks in Austria? Uh, the Van Tropp family house. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the Salzburg salt mines. Yeah, uh, which is where you get the best salt in the world is from the salt salt mines in Salzburg. I bought it at the airport. It is delicious. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm gonna say uh, uh, oh, you- the Vienna. The Vienna has like uh, one of the great um, concert halls of all time. Um, in Vienna, yeah, one of the great like sort of opera houses of where do all you time. We're perform- across the street from it when we're yeah, in yeah. So where do I perform? Yeah, when you perform in Austria, what theater was that? Yeah, theater. <laughs> What Did is the sig- theater? What is- we're in a theater. Yeah. What was is it, the significance? Was, was it where Jesus died? <laughs> what is the significance of the Habsburg dynasty in Austrian history? Because they have the Habs and the Habs not. Yeah. And that was the Habs. They were the people who did have. So they had a lot of money. That's where the term that the Habs and the Habs not. Okay. Right. And so the dynasty uh, was a popular TV show. Okay. Who, uh, who killed Ludwig? <laughs> was, it, kept, it kept them all fucking hung up for all summer. <laughs> okay. All summer, everyone was talking about, I don't know, he got shot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Donald Schwarzenegger, give me another point. Oh, yeah, 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 him. yeah I, we all forgot it. What was the Austro Hungarian Empire and how did it come into existence? The Austrian Hungarian Empire. Uh, well, uh, I'll tell you uh, what. Austro-Hungarian. I, I'll Empire. tell you what. Austria should have taken most of the credit. I've been to Hungary. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Austria, Austria, far superior country to Hungary. Ah, Budapest is a nice castle. It's a nice castle, yeah. but I judge places by what I, what food I can buy on the streets. And I'm with you. And we had one you, of the worst dinners on the tour. You in can't Budapest. buy a good meal in Hungary. Yeah. It's fucking <laughs> impossible. I've tried spending money. I've tried where the locals tell me it's all I'll shit. I'll never forget the that's airport story Hungary. you told. <laughs> it's shit. That's Romania. That's Romania? Romania. Oh, yeah. Were you going to Budapest? We were on no, the way no, to no. Budapest. Okay, and Romania, right. We're on our way to Israel. The, the airport in Romania is as basic a place <laughs> that I've ever been. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been in buildings that have been shut down. <laughs> <laughs> can you explain? Do you want? Yeah, I don't think you need to answer that question. I don't think you know. Um, People you- on the floor <laughs> slicing ham on a blanket. <laughs> Can you ex- in the middle of the airport? <laughs> can you explain the significance of the Battle of Vienna in 1683? I don't know. Why I'm asking this. Uh, why the significance of what year? 1683 in Vienna. 1680. Battle of Vienna. 1683. It was the year that Hitler was born. It gave him the idea. <laughs> and what about the Treaty of Vienna in 1815? Ah, the treaty. It was a trifle type thing. Here's a good question. How did Austria fare during World War II? Ah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, very well for the first bit, <laughs> okay. and then it petered off right at the end. Uh, they, they were, they were, they were, they were with Hitler pretty quick on, right? Now, pretty early on, they were they were with the Nazis, 
But if The Sound of Music taught me anything, there was a few people, because that was the thing, the dad, Christopher Plummer, comes in and he sees the fucking... He, he's been away on his honeymoon, right? He's been off shagging Julie Andrews high on a hill somewhere, right? And he comes back and the fucking... Some cunt fucking put a Nazi flag up in his house. Yep. And he gets there and he fucking tears it down and then he rips it in half like this. <laughs> Fuck the Nazis. I like that all of your knowledge is based on the sound of music. It's better than nothing. <laughs> it's true. What role did Austria play in the Cold War? I don't think that was in the sound of music. The Cold War. Uh, the Cold War. <laughs> uh, it might oh, have. Post I, I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know. They, they kept Captain America frozen. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, during the Cold War... Uh, okay, so the Cold War, maybe they were a, a, a refuge or something for people from East Germany to escape into. And how did they rebuild and recover after World War II? Um, yeah, it's yeah. so nice. It looks like it's yeah, kind of preserved. Yeah, whatever they did, uh, bravo yeah, to, the, to the construction people. So it's because, one of the coolest cities ever go to. If you Vienna, go, at least. If you go to Berlin, Berlin... Like people go, oh, it's crazy, good Berlin. You know, yeah. you come here, you have, you can do anything you want at any hour of day. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. It's mm. a fucking dump. You can tell, you can tell. <laughs> it's all the new. Play. It's like new. Oh, build, yeah. and it's all been rebuilt in the seventies, right? The worst yeah. architectural time in history, yeah. and it fucking looks because you go to Hamburg and all this type of stuff, and it's still beautiful. Vienna to me is like one of the prettiest cities ever. Munich is a yeah. beautiful city. Munich, still, yeah. but but Berlin is yeah. a fuck. And so whatever they've done in Vienna, they rebuilt it pretty quick. I would have say oh, wouldn't put it past a bit of slavery. Would probably help them out or something. Okay. How did Austria contribute to the cultural and intellectual developments of Europe? What was there? Um, well, with Mozart, they were no. at the forefront of music. Uh, they also invented the Mozart chocolate, which is an overrated truffle if ever I've had one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I didn't. I don't like the. the I, we yeah, had those over, there. They all, the sausages are great. The chocolates, whatever. Yeah, the chocolate. You leave yeah. it up to the Swiss. Yeah, you're really close to Switzerland. Yeah, so yeah I know. You, I know what you're trying to do. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> the store's full of them there, though. Yeah, yeah. I reckon they probably also invented those those boxes where you wind it. It plays one song over and over again. That would be a Vienna thing. Ding ding ding. The ding, music ding, box. Also, yeah. also Vienna. Sort out your weed stores, right? Because you go in there. And they're like, oh, we can't see any cultural and intellectual. We can't see anything with THC in it, right? And you're like, but I want to get high. And I go, what do you, what do you do? And they go, oh, this just has like CBD, but doesn't have THC. And I'm like, who comes in here? And the guy's like, just wait there. And then he like handed me weed over the counter. He's like, this will get you high. It was like, good. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, it worked. We did an escape room. I couldn't get out of it. Yeah, it worked. Worked the treat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just your hotel room. <laughs> it was a knockoff Harry Potter. It was a, it was a Nazi bunker. <laughs> Uh, let me skip that question. Let's we'll do the last two then. One of the greatest films ever made was set in post Second World War Vienna. What is its name? Sound of Music. Yeah. But um, post? Yeah, yeah. This is according to Stephen. He thinks this is one of the greatest it's films pre ever. Pre World War. II. I didn't say this. This is. This it's is not post. Guess. It's not post. I know, but I, because no, Rolf. No, it's a different movie. Rolf. It's not the Sound of Music. Yeah, yeah. but Round of Music is the greatest. One of the greatest movies of all this time. Is, this is our guest. Well, this is opinion. the other one. All right, yeah. this fucking. <laughs> Steve, this movie better have fucking songs. <laughs> okay, we'll it better that. have songs that I can fucking rattle away like this, like a few of my favorite fucking things. Because I, de okay, what is it? Post, that means after. Yeah. And, 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 and is it not just set in Austria, but it's also like Austrian set driven? Set in post Second World War Vienna. Um, so Billy city. Joel had a song called Vienna. Vienna, waits. Vienna, waits for you. Uh, Put that in. Give um, me a point. Blue. It, it stars Orson Welles. Oh, Orson Welles. That would be the name of my world company. <laughs> Orson Welles. <laughs> You have a lot of companies. Yeah, yeah I'm mostly. I'm I, don't, I don't think he's going to get it, but we'll. we'll, we'll, we'll it starts Orson Wells. We'll, we'll uh, answer that one first. Just so you know. uh, 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 um, yeah, one more um, Orson Welles was. But I don't War of the really, Worlds. Yeah, well, it's War of the Worlds no. or, or, it's, or it's Citizen Kane. Or Touch and of Evil. Citizen Kane. It's not Touch of Evil. Isn't, isn't set in Vienna, but I'm going to say Citizen Kane. How, last question. How has Austria's position in Europe evolved over time? Um, what do you mean? Like where it's actually located? No, just like, <laughs> you know, it's reputation or it's politically. Uh, or... It's gotten away with a bit of murder. That's what I reckon about Austria. <laughs> a there's, a, there's a few countries. <laughs> yeah. There's a few countries that are just like this. 
crazy what those Germans did, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what country are you talking about? I'm looking at you, Netherlands. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. The, the Dutch get away with a lot. Yeah, of the, du- the Dutch. The, the Dutch, Dutch really have gotten away with. Oh, it. the Dutch are like we are wooden shoes and weed. That is what we do. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they're like, they conquered and t- they're, they're fucking, what, what's wrong with South Africa? That was the Dutch. Forget South Africa. When we were in Singapore, I've, like, I'm, we were in Singapore and I was just reading something and it was like, the Dutch got here. I'm like, the Dutch have been everywhere fucking around the with people. The Dutch and the, uh, fr- the French as well. Yeah. The French are just smoking cigarettes, colonizing faces like. <laughs> All right. Let's, yeah, uh, what are you talking about? The Mauritius. Yes, there are no more people there. <laughs> All right, um, questions. <laughs> how did Jim do on his knowledge of Austria? Zero through ten, Stephen. Ten's the best. Um. Well, it's up, up and down. I think. I was, mm, I think, I mean, mm. Like the Austrian so, economy in the nineteen forties. <laughs> nice. Uh, um, <laughs> that should I, make should it. Should I go ten. through question by question, or, or well, we, we're we're gonna go back and keep... answer them. Yeah, but for, for right now, just give me a score, and then we'll go question by question. I'll I'll I'll. I'll Leaders, oh, I'd though. say about about five. I mean, not bad. Five. Not How bad. do you do in confidence, Jack? Four. He he keeps saying he doesn't know Four. what any of this is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. He got really mad about the sound of music. Part. I'm pretty hungry though. So well, I'm right. <laughs> I'm right about the sound of music. So let me give you a 19. Wizard of Austria. <laughs> Bloody, there's a better movie than the sound of music. Yo, let's, let's, skip, <laughs> let's skip. Let's skip. Whatever. Let's, that, let's go straight. Let's to that skip ahead to this question. Let's take that film. One of the great. Yeah. That, whatever <laughs> film that Forrest is about to say doesn't have fucking bus tours with people singing. Yeah. I'll tell you that right now. Well, Stephen's gonna tell us one of the greatest films ever made was set in post second world war vienna what is its name the yeah. third man never heard of it <laughs> never heard oh, of it come on, and i haven't even and watched the first fact, two movies kind of more popular almost as popular in, uh it is it's more popular in vienna than the sound of music yeah the, oh you they, just they said that the people have, in vienna tours through the through the through the, the sewers and so on and so forth in uh, where you can see where where orson wells it's a thriller the venetians to. Right, the Venetians, or are that people from Venice? That's people from Venice. That's from Venice, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. People from Venice don't know sound of music? No, Venetians. I said oh, Venetians. Yeah. I remember there was a goalkeeper who was from Venice, and uh, uh, he kept on letting goals in for Manchester United. He, he was only there for a small time, and they called him the blo- uh, Venetian blind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say this on Rotten Tomatoes, the third man has 99%. It's pretty really good. I'm not saying it's Metacritic really good 97%. I'm just uh, saying well, that movie came out before those were even things. Yeah, I think it's. <laughs> <laughs> but cul- culturally, look, it's not legit. Legit's better than the, the Third Man, and we don't do bus tours. <laughs> well, I don't think they're <laughs> bus tours. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, people go just to. Graham just Green to wrote it. He's good. So oh, uh, v- v- it's uh, a great film, Jim. I, I think you should see it. It's got some couple of good g- jokes too. How about the Viennese? Can they get called the Viennese? Yeah. What, what about the Viennese? Is that the people from uh, yeah, uh, Viennese. Yeah. Viennese. Yes. Viennese or the or the uh, Vienna Kong? <laughs> <God. laughs> <No. laughs> Alright, let's get to the question. Really Austrian style, I think. Really, yeah. Okay, first first question here: When was Austria founded? Bloody, like, they hide in the sewers. I've been told. <laughs> when was Austria Doing tours? <laughs> when was Austria founded as a country? Jim said five hundred years ago. Is that correct? <laughs> Uh, well, I gave I gave Jim ten for that because it's an impossible question because no. because oh. uh, Austria the the Margrave the Margrave Margra- Margraviate of Austria was founded in nine seventy six, the Duke Duchy of Austria eleven fifty six, the Archduchy in, in 8, 1358. Uh Then they had the the, had the Habsburgs kind of created what? Oh, I know Austrian, about the Habsburgs. Empire fifteen twenty six. Yeah. Then seventeen thirteen, eighteen oh four is the Empire of Austria. 1867 is Austria-Hungary. Uh, 1918 is the Austrian Republic that we have now. Yeah, it's a trick question, I so guess. So it's a trick question, know, basically. Yeah. 19, Four, so I'm, I'm going to give Jim 10 for that. All right, all right, so 500 years is right. Yeah, well, 1918. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's actually to the day, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. I've talked about it before. I'll talk about it again. Therapy. Big fan of therapy. I've never seen therapy hurt a person. I've only seen it help. 
Uh, and for me personally, it's gotten me through a lot of tough times, uh, times when I felt like I couldn't talk to other people. And you can always talk to a therapist. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze in the special things into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters so you can do more of it, right? Now, throughout my life, in good times and bad, I've gone to therapy. But what I do wrong is when the good times are happening, I always stop the therapy. I always think I'm fine. I'm never fine. I'm just keeping the wolf at bay. You know what I mean? So I keep going to therapy now. I've made it part of my regular thing. Working out your brain is the same as working out any other muscle in your body. If you leave it to sit idle, it will waste away, right? If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched up to a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for the things that make you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash IDK today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash IDK. Uh, what does Austria's flag look like? What is the significance of his nine? Jim said eagle it, in the middle. Is it red and white? And, yeah. Red and white? It is red and white, but, right, but it, it, um... Damn, what's that? But it's not quite. It's not yeah. quite. I'll give you five for that, Jim. Yeah, red and white, red and white. <laughs> it, You're not scoring him anymore. Red. I did know red and white, but then I changed. And I yeah, it's just it's two red stripes with a white stripe in the middle, like so. Yeah. Yes, indeed, and, and, and it does have an eagle on it if, if it's a, an official flag. And it does have an eagle on oh, the it official. Does. Oh. Uh, I didn't bloody. I watch. Uh, I watch football. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's, that's the eagle. That's the one I was thinking uh, of. Yeah, with the, the flag. yeah, okay, my bad, my bad. I just looked it up real quick. What is the significance of this design? Is there the color? Is there a significance of it? Uh, yes, there is. Um, it, it was the it was the uh, it was the coat of arms of the of the original uh, dynasty that ruled Austria, which is the Babenbergs, and they claim and there was a claim, at least a legend, that it represents the fact that. I looked at this up just to make sure. Leopold V in 1190 at the siege of, siege of Acre was wearing a white tunic as a, as a crusader. And he was so blood drenched in blood that, that, that when he took his belt off in the middle, right, his, his sword belt in the middle, it was red, white, and red. Oh, yeah, the belt was white. Do you okay, reckon, do you you reckon eagles? Oh, is Battenberg, is Battenberg the cake? No, that, no, that's, no that's, that's the Battenbergs. These, these are the, these are the Baben, Babenbergs. Oh, so they the bread rolls, the bats. They're all Germans, but yeah, but yeah. Uh, 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 all, right, all right. What were you saying? Nothing. I was, oh, oh, I was about to way, say about you know, eagles. You know who, you know who the, are the Battenbergs? Who? The Mount Battens. And where are they from? Well, you, re you, re you remember, you remember um, Prince Charles, um, now King Charles's godfather, I think, or his relative, a uh, Philip, uh, and I, I think Prince Philip was a Mount Batten too. They were all Nazis, yes. the royal family, and you know it. <laughs> no, 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 Jim. You, you're not, Bloody, they you're were. He was off hanging out with Hitler. I'm telling you, before old Stutter McGee came in, the bloke before was hanging out with Hitler. I've seen the crown. Um, <laughs> who yeah, and, it's, and it's all wrong, but yeah, never mind. As a historian, like, the crown is a nightmare because it's you, you never know what's true and what's not true. What, did anyway. Diana die in Spain or something? <laughs> she didn't die at all. <laughs> um, who was exactly. the first ruler leader of Austria? What was their title? I guess we're going by the 1918. Is that what we're going to do? Or is it still? Yeah. I don't know. Well, again, that's impossible. Okay. Um, but uh, because they're, they're, Austria's had, had so many v v versions. But I guess the best answer would be would be Karl Renner, who was the first. Uh, Love his movies. Uh, Chancellor of Austria, <laughs> 1918. Chancellor. Hello, the Chancellor is so the word. You're like, uh, Chancellor, yeah, the yeah. Chancellor. Would you say love his movies? Carl love Renner? Yeah, yeah. Carl Renner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. What happened? There's Cave 1 and Cave 2. It's very good. Uh, <laughs> and then notable figures from Austrian history Jim said Mozart, Von Trapp family, Crocodile Dundee, Hitler, Freud. And then Son Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm Arnold. not sure about Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a bit of a. And Arnold. Crap. And Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's there's Ar Arnie, yes, Ar Arnold's name, yeah. Where is, is he from the Holocaust? There, there, there are lots of them. There's Gustav Mahler, there's there's Arnold Schoenberg, there's, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, 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 Friedrich von Hayek. 
Oh yeah. Uh, there are lo lots. There's there's Billy Wilder was Austrian. Oh. Uh, Where is Billy Wilder? So there are lots of. He was a rock star. Hmm? Was he? No, great director. director. Oh. Billy Wilder. Some Like It Hot by, uh, is a Billy Wilder movie. Oh, I like ah, Some Like It Hot. The Apartment. Yeah, bloody, pretty good, pretty bloody, good movie. Uh, that, that yeah, bloody pretty good shoot. director. If you, like yeah. a, if you like a thick girl, Marilyn Monroe was at a peak in that movie. You know, mm -hmm. When she walks down the train, <laughs> that was bloody good. Uh, like famous landmarks in Austria. Jim said the Von Trapp family house. It is. The Salzburg <laughs> salt mines and the concert hall. Yeah. They're all, they're, it's all true. You're going to have things that are bigger, but yeah. everything I said was right. <laughs> yeah. they just have concert hall I, I, I would i would say that it's an interesting story about the the not not the actual von trap family house but the the house that was used mm. um in the film uh to to symbolize that the the, the the von trap's family house is the is schloss leopoldskron which is which is in salzburg and was the, the seat of one of the salzburg um um uh bishops mm. and it, but but in from the in, from in the 1920s, it was owned by Max Reinhardt, the uh, the famous uh, film uh, theater director. Uh, and uh, anyway, so it, and it's now the seat of the Salzburg Seminar. It's a. It's sorry, a, I'm getting a bit. His, I'm, I'm being a bit of a historian. Sorry, that's all right, sorry. That's all right. I, I, that's that's why we have you on. It, whatever it is, it's a banging location. It's right there yeah. in the water. Yeah. Oh, it's it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. And that's that's in Salzburg, or. Yeah, that's yes, big. that's uh, that's that's just down the road from the from the from the castle, as it yeah. were. What's the con? Has, has its own lake. The concert the hall you were talking about was the Philharmonic, right? Yeah, yeah, the opera yeah. there. And okay, any other famous landmarks in Austria we should know about besides the well, salt mines? Well, there's the Pat, there's Schönbrunn. There's uh, there's the center of, of yeah, there's the Hofburg in the center of Vienna. There, are, there, there, it's 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 full of it's full of dams. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we talked about it. What is that? Um, there's, there's, there, I mean, there are other ones like Mauthausen concentration camp. Mm -hmm. um, Good one. Yeah, but it's not as fun. There are lots, as the of, lots, of, lots of mountains in the you know in the, the, the Alps and so on. <laughs> yeah, we were in Mayer Salzburg Castle that one for that one. It's, it's it's very very picturesque. Vienna. Did we go not, for not a big Mauthausen dinner there somewhere uh, that was not on the water, or was that somewhere yeah. else? Where did we go? That was in that was in Zurich. But uh the vienna is like one of the just yeah like you said there's so many just you walk through the city forever and everything is old the buildings were really beautiful and there's just things building after building it never ends it's like compared to the other yeah. cities i feel like right no, it's a nice place vienna i got a lot of time for vienna all you need to it, make me it, happy it is gets, a hot dog it keeps in every getting corner. top marks at, you know nicest place to live in the world at the moment so which is ironic, given given certain things. But what was that horse? We talked about that. We saw horse. Remember those horses? There was that, I've like, seen horses in other. No, 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 no. But it was like a, it was a it was a it was a glassed in area with horses in the middle of the city. Well, that again, that's, that's, a, that's very much a landmark. That's the Spanish Riding School. <laughs> the Spanish uh, Riding School. A, you don't remember um, that? The, uh, I, I saw a picture recently where the where the um, the riders were were were. were put, put, had, had, were leaving the horses out, and, and they were the horses were grazing in, in in the park next door, which is quite sweet. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, what is the significance of the Habsburg dynasty in Austrian history? Jim said you have the Habs and Habs Nots. Dynasty was a popular TV show. <laughs> Who killed Ludwig? I think that's wrong. Yeah, I think I think though. that's a zero, Jim. That's, yeah, that's well, really well, we, the way <laughs> not, the way not, Forrest not, said it without um, gusto. The Habsburgs were a dynasty. Ironically, they're a Swiss <laughs> dynasty. <laughs> That also owned territory before there was a Switzerland, uh, and they and they were uh, they had territory also in Alsace, which is now in France, and somehow or other, in the Middle Ages they ended up in in, in Austria in what's now Austria, and then and then they went on to be rulers of Austria, then of then of Spain, then of the Netherlands, then of Burgundy, uh, and then Poland, part, mm. most of Poland, most of Hungary, large parts of uh, the south southeast Europe, so. They had quite a quite a career. Habsburgs yeah. I never and South America Habsburg, as well. But they would yeah. assume have money just based on that last answer. Mm -hmm. You know Habsburg? No, they 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 made the um the the small gummy bears. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Hasbro, um, Haribo. Yes. Haribo. Haribo dynasty. Not quite. <laughs> the, not quite. The two, and they're not the, the toy Habsburg makers brothers. either, as far as I know. <laughs> Uh, what was the Austro-Hungarian Empire and how did it come into existence? Uh, Austria should take all the Austria credit. Austria-Hungarian oh. Empire. Yeah, yes. Jim the said Austria Hungary hasn't uh, done anything. 
Yeah. Jim Jim got six on that, I think. I'm not quite because he because he because he because I shot on Hungary. He, <laughs> he prioritized hun, uh, Austria over Hungary. Or Way like more that. important. Way more. There's nothing going on in Hungary. <laughs> the, it, it, like just burger joints with frozen patties. It's not very good. <laughs> 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 what place was that? The whole place. There isn't a, I, I there isn't a good meal to, to be Austrian. had so in Hungary. It's the, the reason everyone's uh, so fucking hungry. All of this <laughs> shit. Well, well, they're, they're Hungarian. They're hung Hungarian, so they have to be hungry. Don't yeah. They? So anyway, yeah. Um, so um, the Austro-Hungarian Empire was was uh, happened in 1867 when the Austrian Empire had to be divided in two because the Hungarians um, had had uh, had. I demanded it and wouldn't pay their taxes and wouldn't wouldn't uh, wouldn't I kept resisting Austrian rule. So the Austrian emperor basically allowed Hungary to go half of half independent. Like goulash, so get the fuck out of here! You got to <laughs> goulash. Come, yeah, you got to come to the table with something better than fucking goulash. Goulash. Yeah. Oh, uh, so that's oh, so, that looks like it well, looks like uh, Debert Cena. Debert Cena sausage is quite good. Mac. Debert Cena sausage is quite good. We didn't have those when we were there. That was like the worst meal we had on tour. Yeah, it's not the it's worst not, ones. And uh, yeah, yeah. people are like, they shoot a lot of films there though now in Budapest. In my house in Budapest. Yeah. Uh, the the ba nice thing about Budapest is that the Danube actually goes through the middle of town, whereas right. whereas uh, in Vienna, which is has the, the the beautiful blue Danube, the blue Danube is a brown river on the side. So that, that, that's the kind of thing. That area is nice, the, by the, the castle and the river. That's the best part of, of Budapest. Though. Pretty enough, but the food's <clears throat> crap. Yeah. Views are lost on Jim. We know yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't care for views. <laughs> and his prime minister is pretty pretty nasty, I must say. Yes, but then, Oh, but we don't get political, political on this show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I might be a big fan of that man slash woman. <laughs> <laughs> what uh what um what do what do you say about views again i forgot views are lost if, on no him. but if it comes into your all right if, if I, it comes in front of you you'll see yeah it. if <laughs> if i just walk around the corner and there's one i'll go yeah it's a good one <laughs> but i won't i won't search it out <laughs> yeah it's like i saw one the other day i drove from i drove from uh big bear to palm springs and i went over the mountain rather than yeah. around the mountain which made, and i went over the mountain and that was took me took my breath away because yeah. of the altitude you didn't but, stop though but uh <laughs> no i didn't stop yeah <laughs> you never i could stopped. see it out the window <laughs> you, well, you never stopped like the, no i've never like, i've never stopped i've never put a, a i've never put a nickel in one of those machines to look at something when we went to milan there was a day like we were like i'm going out today we went on the train and we, we, went to we, Lake did, a, we, did, we did a couple of things in milan actually to be fair but we went to lake home on a train we ate we walked to the Bottom of the lake, and then he goes. I've seen Lake Como now, but the lake is massive. It goes like <laughs> it goes so much further. Yeah, but I and saw there's it. all these like castle-y type things. So you go, He's I've right. Seen, he did see I've the seen lake. it now. I've he saw the lake. He saw the lake. I don't need to go back to Lake Como. <laughs> My, right. my my father always does that. It's like if my my brother rings up and goes, "Hey, Dad, why don't you come out and spend some time with us in Perth?" And my dad's like this. I've seen Perth. <laughs> I've, I've, I've been to Perth before. Yeah, but your grandkids are here. It's not really the town you're visiting. It's the people. Um, can you explain the significance of the Battle of Vienna of 1683? Can they make me in Alice Springs? I've never been. Uh, Jim said he was born in 1683, Hitler. I don't think that's right. No, of course. Yeah, it's Battle not right. of Vienna, 1683. What happened then? No, that was, that was completely wrong, Jim. Mm. Yes. Uh, Dang. Uh, uh, 1683, uh, the, the Austrians claim that that they saved Christendom from the Turks. It was, what, the, it was Christianity the, end of the, siege of the, or? the siege of Vienna by the Turks. What did they save from the Turks? Christ Christendom. What's Christendom? Uh, <laughs> uh, I think that's an, I, I'm not really an expert on Christendom actually, but I, I think it's something to do with Christianity and the fact that, that, that there was, you know, the, the the Turks who were not who were not Christians but who were Muslims uh, had been. Had 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 a, a conquered most of Southeast uh, Europe, and they were on. They were trying to conquer the rest of, rest of Europe. Uh, yeah, yeah. The bloody the Turks and, are uh, paying the neck. And the Austrians, the Austrians stopped them with the help of the Poles. You've heard this. You've heard that. You're going to hear this first, right here. Turks, pain in the neck. Pain in the neck country. <laughs> I don't think that's first, but yeah. Yeah, bloody pain in the ass. The Turks. Yeah. Have you ever been to Glendale? They're not fans. <laughs> I, I look. I, the I, Armenians I, are not fans of Turkey. So yeah, Turkey. Yeah. Turkey's always up. They're shit stirrers. The Turks. Yeah. What are you talking about touring there? Yeah, come and see me. 
<laughs> Istanbul, yeah. <laughs> No, I'd like to go to Istanbul. <laughs> I would like to go to Istanbul. But World War One, they were no good to the Australians, the Turks. Okay. No good. We were shooting no, at them as well. Rather, na- rather nasty. Yeah, yeah that true. one. Was, that, in the, in the, the other the... thing that happened in, in, theoretically in 1683 is that, is that the croissant was invented. Oh, what? In Austria? Yeah. Not in France. What? Typical French. Why did they call it a French name then? Because it was it was originally a, a um, uh, let me let me think uh, uh, it's called a, it's a crescent, and it was uh, I'm, tr- God, I'm trying to think what the what the shots. <laughs> um, like it's meant to be like a moon. Kipful, kipful, a kipful, which is of course the si- the sign of the Turks, right, uh, of, of, of Islam. Right. Kipful, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the crescent, crescent. Yeah, this moon. says. And, uh, I'll take and, everything and back I said about the Turks. The, a, an Austrian <laughs> baker to celebrate the the defeat of the Turks. Uh, is is supposed to have created a, a crescent shaped pastry, ah. and uh, the reason why it became the croissant later is because when Marie Anne, Marie Antoinette, who was Austrian, became Queen of France, she brought her Viennese pastries with it with with her, uh, and to this day, in fact, the croissant and, and Viennese and pastries in France are called Viennoiserie. Of Viennese pastries. I, I believe that chemicals in food help make you fat, not type of stuff. The fresher things are, the less fat you are, because I fucking been around Europe and you can't start eating fucking yeah. pastry. The Danish, da- Danishes, yeah. uh, Danishes it's and just croissants, better, really, yeah. and they're eating this shit all the fucking time. It's at all the breakfasts and they're, and they're all way thinner. Like, I was a fat guy in Europe. I was walking around, people were staring at me. Um... <laughs> I hope you have a good dinner party fact because that one was really good. That you should one have saved was that for very dinner good. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not gonna beat that. You, one. you can't beat that. You yeah, can beat that that's one. a good one. Because we, 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 I looked it up. Yeah, Kipferl. Yeah, Austria. It's all there. It's all happening. The Austrians uh, invented the croissant. Yeah, there you go. Who invented the chocolate filled one? <laughs> <laughs> that's who gets the real credit. Uh, I think that's probably the French. That's that, that's decadent. Yeah, they that's did the versions. Yeah. We did uh, the chocolate filled. The we one, make it square. The one filled <laughs> with the, the cigarettes. We warm it up. We have it melt. Yeah. Uh, what's the significance of the Treaty of Vienna in 1815? I said it was a uh, truffle like dessert. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's Jack wrote trifle. You were wrong. Don't know I, you were wrong. You don't know what a trifle is. Uh, a trifle is an English dessert with know, jelly and custard no, and all that stuff. Yeah, it's layered. That. Don't you remember that episode of Friends where where Rachel is going to make a real English trifle, but the pages are stuck together, and she makes no. half a shepherd's no. pie and half a trifle, and it's got minced meat through it, no. and they have to and like Joey and this Ross. Sounds like a really lame episode. It's a very good episode. <laughs> Joey and Ross want to hang out with Elle McPherson and her friends because they're having like all a right. hot dance at Thanksgiving. Giving. So they have to eat the trifle, and uh, Joey pounds it away, and he's like this. I liked it. Custard, good. Jelly, good. Jam, good. Meat, good. <laughs> it's a good episode. <laughs> so Treaty of Vienna, 1815, what happened there? Uh, that was the end of the uh, uh, French Revolutionary Napoleonic Wars, and it, it, and it basically uh, was the peace treaty that, that held through most of the 19th century, until the, until the First World War, in effect, uh, and and it's up there with the kind of the, the Treaty of Versailles of 1919, and the post the post Second World War settlement. So it was it's a it was a major uh, diplomatic uh, uh, settlement. Is Arnold Schwarzenegger's accent a legitimate uh, Viennese accent? Because I met a guy from Vienna, and he. Uh, it was like, oh, no one. He goes, no, no, no one speaks like that. That's what he I said. I didn't think he was from Vienna. No, he's he was from Vienna. Oh, okay. And he said that he, he, on the call. he said that Arnold Schwarzenegger bunged it on a bit. He was like bunging on that that uh, accent. Or is that like or is that like how the Beatles have like an old Liverpool accent and that doesn't exist anymore? Or is that a real Vienna accent? Is he there? Sorry, sorry, chaps. Um, I uh, that was a phone call. Um. So, it's okay. Uh, okay, no problem. All I said was, okay. does, does Arnold Schwarzenegger sound like bullshit or not? Is that how people sound? Does his accent real? Like, is it well, in Austria? Yeah. Uh, is he laying it on thick? That's what Jim asked. Because I, I, I think he's laying it on thick, but yeah, yeah everyone thinks he's, he's laying it on. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are, I mean, the, he's certainly not a Viennese. The Viennese tend tend to. It, it depends what uh, what. 
what part of what what class? Well, what he 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 grew up he grew from. up in a small town in Austria, and his father was a Nazi who came back from the yes. war and was very disillusioned. And then Arnold's was like, "I'm going to lift things in the woods," like that. <laughs> And then, and then he made several movies, including the film Twins. So, uh, to answer your question, yes, that accent is bung dong. <laughs> it's your question. There are, there are elements that are Austrian, but the, but the Viennese sound completely different from 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 Schwarzenegger. So, uh, is Schwarzenegger a popular thing. popular name? Are there are lots no. of Schwarzeneggers. Well, I mean, they're not that they're not that many Schwarzeneggers around uh, i would say yes oh, okay. kind of more schmidt or i mean a popular schmidt. name in a popular Arnold name schmidt. In vienna for instance is is novotny which it would, you'd think would be a czech name but there were so many czechs came to vienna uh during the time of the empire that uh, but that, that you know about a third of the population was had czech origin at one point how many people are, are now named adolf <laughs> uh, not many strangely enough but there was yeah. there was tons wasn't there uh, there were there were quite a few, yeah, but it, it for some reason it, it, it went out of popularity. Yeah, nobody yeah. knows. Um, how did Austria fare during World War II, Jim? Said, That's why I didn't call my son Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. Jeffries. <laughs> how did Austria fare yeah, during World War II? Good idea. Two, yeah. Jim said very well. How did Austria? How did the first Austria, bit that it petered um, off at the end? Actually, Jim, you you got about ten out of ten on this one because yeah, you, yeah. you, you said that you st they started really well and you kind of petered off at the end, <laughs> which I think is about right. Yeah. <laughs> that would get your marks in a high school exam. Not a, you know. I don't know if it would petered off at the end. But you, I, I will say, I will say this. Oh no, they they escaped. They escaped the full consequences of the, yeah. Of the war. Oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah, were yeah. they were with. There's a whole heap, whole heap of It's always it's always Germany and then Italy Germany, and Japan. Germany, Italy, and Ger Japan. The three countries. They all get fucking told off yeah, right yeah. as being the ba the nasty pasties of the war. And then like Holland and Austria and the French to a degree, and I that sort of walk away like this. Ah, what are you gonna do, eh? What are you gonna do? <laughs> Fucking that Hitler! Like, whoa, what was he like? <laughs> well, so, someone once someone once put it this way: it says uh, from 1938 to 1943, the Austrians actually ha had become more or less Germans. Mm. Then in 1943, uh, around the time of Stalingrad, they started becoming Austrians again. Yeah. It's like if Australia's yeah, yeah, yeah. if Australia started causing a lot of genocides, like not like. We've already done a couple, but I mean, like, well, we've done one. But like, if we had a new one, a recent one, a good one, yeah, right. If a we had, <laughs> if we had, like, no, like a little doozy of a, like, what are you up People to? People gonna remember. Yeah, this what are you one. up to? Yeah, I would, I, I, I'd be less critical of New Zealand than I am these days. Yeah, I'd be like, ah, oh, New Zealand. What's well, like the Mel Gibson joke he used to do? What was that? It was like. It was like Mel Gibson. Oh, America was like American uh, actor Mel Gibson, whatever. And then all, when he said all this yeah, shit, that's he goes, right. Australian actor yeah, Mel so, Gibson. <laughs> so it was like when I moved over, yeah, years yeah. ago, it used to be like this. It used to be uh, uh, American actor Mel Gibson, blah, da, 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 da. And his new movie, Lethal Weapon, Braveheart, American actor, American actor, American, because he was born American. He moved over to Australia and he was six. And then as soon as he said the N word, I was watching American news and it went, Australian actor Mel Gibson <laughs> has got himself yeah, yeah. in some hot water. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, Fuck off! <laughs> was it the N word? Yeah, he did a lot. He said things about the Jews, and he said, but he, he said he did, the, the, the N word was in his repertoire. Yeah, I mm. assume. Yeah. yeah, I mean that makes sense. Um, the, the 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 Austrians the, after the the Second World War, the Austrians uh, were uh, it, the way the Austrians did it was they persuaded the Allies that that um, Hitler was a Hitler was a German and uh, Beethoven was an Austrian. Uh, yeah. oh, so Beethoven wasn't an Austrian? Not really. No. What? When did he move to Salzburg? He never. But we're talking Beethoven here, not. Oh, Mozart. oh, oh Mozart I was talking Beethoven. Really okay. Austrian either, because he he was because Salzburg wasn't part of Austria at the time, which is rather com complicated. Uh, complicated. Really? Where was Salzburg uh, from? Where was Austrian Salzburg identities. part of? But anyway, yes. Mm. Oh, Joe was asking where is Sal what, what, Sal where, where, what was Salzburg? What part was Salzburg? Of? What, what Salzburg was part of the Holy Roman Empire. So Prussia um, and all that shit. It, but it was a, its own uh, um, a, a bishop, archbishop, archbishopric. So it was it, it wasn't actually part of the of the Austrian lands, which were at that that time defined as what the Habsburgs ruled over. Uh, 
I and, skipped that question. I'm sorry. What role did Austria play in the Holy was, Roman Empire? Was Hitler was Hitler a proud Austrian, or because he always used to say German this, Germany that, right? No, but, he he was born in Austria, but but he um he he was uh he he did become a German a German uh, citizen in the in the I think he he escaped to Munich and I think became a German citizen during the First World War. Hmm. Well, he was he, so, he, he was a soldier in the First World War, so he, for the German army. So you think he'd probably even done it before then, yeah? Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, the, the the trouble was that, that that there were there were many Austrians who regarded themselves as German, even if they were Austrian citizens. They were still culturally German. I oh, know. I've seen that bit in the, in the Sound of so, Music. So, we're all you know, of so, the so truck he, mates. He he escaped uh, from from Aust Austria to Germany, and and that, but then when the war came, he 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 was part of the German army. Now, can we ha can we quickly get up uh, Maria von Trapp, right? The the real Maria von Trapp, just so we can have a look at what she looks like. I honestly didn't know that the Sound of Music was a real story oh, until, a real until this, this, this podcast. No, it's a real <laughs> thing. I, I, I've seen the movie they, many times. They oh. they uh, emigrated. They emigrated to America. They were like a traveling black. They did like the Edinburgh Festival yes, type indeed. gigs, that type of stuff, and they emigrated to America. I did not know. And this. the kids, I think they're still even. There she is. Oh boy, she was bloody. She, <laughs> if you saw that thing skipping down the road with a guitar case, I have confidence in such a she wouldn't have done too well. I don't know how she got a billionaire. Well, I, I guess it was because he had six picture, fucking how old kids. Was she at the time? I don't know. Jack was just showing it. She looks. Oh, no. She's a homely Probably girl. Probably 40s there. Yeah, she was nothing to write home about. Look Maria good, von Trapp. Maybe when she was 18. Oof. Yeah, you never know. Don't start <laughs> Googling. <laughs> Maria, Maria von Trapp, 18. Try Maria von Trapp, nude. <laughs> Try Maria von Trapp, XXX. <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll get some, you'll get some uh, cosplay. But by the way, yeah, yeah. Um, Jim, you were right about the sound of music and not being that popular in Austria. Partly because if you look at the, if you look at the film the, and the narrative of the film, um, the von Trapps are okay, and 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 the and the and the the sisters and the, the nuns are okay. But by the end of the film, everyone, all the other Austrians are basically Nazis. So. Are there Edelweiss the yeah. Edelweiss flowers everywhere? Are they everywhere? Hmm? Edelweiss, the flower, are they are they all over the place? Uh, no, they're they're up in the mountains. Oh, oh, and by the way, Americans for the longest time thought that Edelweiss was the Austrian national anthem. It has nothing to do with the Austrian national anthem. It was it was a song created by by Rogers and Hammerstein, which is which is ironic, given that Rogers and Hammerstein were the great you know ju uh, were the great uh, American uh, musical pair, and yeah. they're Jewish. Yeah, I, I know about Roger and Hammerstein. Yeah, right? that doesn't make sense. So they are, they are, it does, I didn't really think about that too much when we were asking about, why don't you like Sound of Music? But it does not portray most of Austria in a good light. <laughs> that's, what he was, that's what Stephen was saying. Yeah, but it yeah, makes yeah, it yeah. look pretty. The whole thing looks like a no, Bob Ross party. That looks great. But like Stephen was saying, at the end of the movie, they're like, they're all it's Nazis. It's the content of their Yeah, character. yeah, they're all Nazis. So that bit where he just, he comes out and he goes, we're going to travel, we're going to sing songs, but I want to finish with this last song. Edelweiss. Yeah, exactly. And then all the people in the audience, you all sing it together, they all sing Edelweiss. Yeah, there's not a fucking dry eye in the house. And then the, <laughs> the kids go, good night. The way they decide to escape is, by singing a little bit too long, <laughs> right? Rather than escaping at the beginning of the concert, the end of the concert, what we'll do is, right, yeah. kids? And we're going to do this with a six-year-old. Um, um, we're going to uh, get on stage. This is we, another we, dinner table uh, conversation, Jim. But what? There, there is a there is a there is a story where the um, the producers wanted to film the the the. the the German troops coming into the residence plats in Vienna, the, the, the best <laughs> part, the, 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 in the center of Vienna, there's this, mm. where the Archbishop's Palace is, the center of Vienna. They wanted to film the, the German troops c coming in, in in trucks with swastikas all around. Mm. Right? Of course, that's and how for the, some reason the, the, the Austrian or the Salzburg authorities didn't like that. Well, it, it, um, I, I believe the film is in the 1960s, right? All, 19, all 1960s. Austrians were, were against the Nazis. Yeah, but, you know, but, but being the and 1960s, it's only been 20 years removed from the war. I reckon if they knocked on enough doors, they could have got the outfits. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> Granddad! You, you jest. Someone's um, but, here to um, see you! But, but <laughs> they then, want but your outfit! Was that yes, the, um, again! Um, Sorry, go on. Th then what happened was that the... Net, <laughs> the... the, um, the they, the producer said, "Well, if we can't film 
they, they they said they couldn't they couldn't film in that that with you know with the Germans and so on in in the residential flats. Mm. So they said, well, okay, well if, oh, that's unfortunate because if we can't film the the troops coming through, I guess we'll have to use the old newsreels. Oh. And the old newsreels showed all the people lining the streets, Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler, throwing oh, roses yeah, at the Germans sure. coming in. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. so for yeah. some reason, the 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 um the the the, the, the government of Salzburg allowed. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, the, um, the Dutch are the same. Filming the Dutch, in the square. The, the Except Dutch- with one condition. No no sound. Oh, no sound? Yeah. So they didn't want they didn't want any any anyone, you know. The, that's the only sound in the mo- in the scene in the movie is of the uh, is of the engines of the trucks going through. Uh, oh, wow, that is there's, a good there's one. There's no Heil Hitler, you know, no, no cheering crowds. Yeah, because uh, there's nothing yeah. worse than, oh, I remember when we were invaded. Oh, that was a lovely day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Remember that? Um, we, all, well, we, all, we all got the day yeah. off school. <laughs> uh, role in the Cold War. Jim said they kept Captain America frozen. What, what, What's the reality there? <laughs> well, well, if you if you'd seen the third man, you would have you'd have known Jim. You see, this is, this is a... the movie, the yeah. popular movie. Yeah. Well, what was it? What was there? Well, role? well, Austria was the center of spies during the during the Cold War mm-hmm. because because it was you know the, there was and also Austria was divided between the between the four the four Allied powers and Vienna itself it was divided into into sectors. Uh, and Austria between 1945 and 1955 was a kind of a a, a kind of a, a foot kind of um, a, 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 a fought over basically politically by the by the allies of the one uh, the Western allies on the one side and the, and and the Soviet Union, Union on the other, and Austria only really gained its independence in 1955, with the promise that it will be neutral. So it did play a role in the Cold War, I think. And how did Austria rebuild and recover after World War II? Jim said a bit of slavery. Yeah, that's always the answer for everything, isn't it? Well, that that had that had come during the Second World War, as as you probably know, right? Mm. That the that the that the the not the, the Nazi authorities uh, who were who were mostly German, but with the Austrian Austrians there too. Uh, they used con- they used slave labor and concentrate concentration camp labor uh, to build things like. You know, to help, to start building dams and so on. But the real reason why Austria, oh, so I was after right. I, I actually Second thought I was slightly right. Became, on that. Hmm? I was slightly right on that answer. Then, yeah, bit bit of, like, but that was during the war. There were no. There were, I don't think there was any. Yeah, but yeah, after so you got to push the first domino to make the bigger ones hit. Well, after the war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, after the war, I mean, Austria got a lot of lot of investment during the war from the Nazis. So yeah. they, they they created a huge steel steel works in in Linz. Uh, for instance, uh, and then after the war, what happened was that the Americans, largely the Americans, the, the Russian, the the Soviet Union, took lots of stuff out in their in their sector, and the um, and the Americans um, put a lot of stuff in. And in fact, Austria per capita was the country that got most out of the Marshall Plan. When, when you're saying in their sector, so so okay, so when okay, so we were allies with the Russians. The the, the war ends. The Russians put a wall, right. east and west Germany. Why was there? Right. It was there a separation in Austria. What what did the uh, what did the Russians get out of uh, winning the war when it came to Austria? Oh, uh, they got oil. Uh, there were there were oil wells in in eastern Austria. The the, the Russian the Russian sector or, or the Soviet sector was was basically east eastern eastern uh, Austria, um, and there were quite a few there were quite a few. Uh, there was an aircraft factory which the Nazis had right. Built. But it, was there a wall? Did they have a wall as well? Was it the same Berlin Wall or what was it? There, there, there wasn't there wasn't ever a wall. Remember the, the Berlin Wall only went up in 1961. I don't remember that. Uh, no. Between 1945 and 1961, there was there was no Berlin Wall. Mm. The, uh, there were there were sectors, however, and and uh, in Austria as well, there were sectors. So there was an American sector, there was uh, you know British sector, French sector, and and Russian sector, and and Vienna was divided between the between the uh, between the four of them, and. Um, uh, but there, you know, there, there were fences and, and there were rivers and stuff. So you and there was control. But you had you had to you had to have your papers to get between sectors and so on. All right, I got, um, I, got, I got an important question. Who's the who's the hottest chick ever in in Austrian history? Who's the best looking woman? And I'll Google it and then I'll tell you whether you're right or wrong. 
<laughs> oh, I thought you had an answer. No, no, I don't know. That's a difficult. That's a difficult question. I, I, I tell you what. One Google of the most, me hottest one of the most Austrian women of all time. Women of the ninth of the of the twentieth century was was an Austrian. That's H Hedy Lamarr. Oh yeah, Hedy Lamarr. Hedy Lamarr. One of the what, who was who was I used pretty, to like a ha ha beautiful. It's just a hand job Lamarr. But she she also invented she also invented oh. the invented Wi-Fi. Let me let me tell you something. She, what Hedy Lamarr invented Wi-Fi and she was hot. Well, yeah, Eddie Lamar inventor. Look it up. Look it up, Jim. <laughs> look, look it up. Eddie Let's, Let's look up this hot Wi-Fi inventor. But I just want to tell you real quick. I put best looking Austrian woman, and it said, "Did you mean Australian women?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they, and they, they just put up Margot Robbie, yeah. and we go, "No, we meant Austria." And they're like, "We heard you the first time. We just, we just thought you should look at Margot Robbie." <laughs> Hedy Lamar. Yeah. She's, she, she's very pretty. The, the brief thing says frequency hopping played a significant role in World War II, was eventually used to develop Wi Fi. Yeah. So she. Give me a look at Hedy Lamar. She didn't literally create Wi Fi. That goes to some Australian guy named. Goes to Australian boffin, John O'Sullivan. Margot Robbie. Yeah, nothing wrong with Hedy Lamar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And her with the Wi Fi. Good work, Hedy. Hedy. I saw a meme recently and it said it was. It was all the social media, like Zuckerberg, this, that, and it said invented Wi-Fi, and it was a woman, and I did not know who that was. So it was Hedy Lamar. That Hedy was Lamar. that was the whole meme. I'm gonna learn all sorts of stuff. Um, and that was it. Was Are Vienna not two hundred episodes? Yeah. To get one through. <laughs> was Vienna not bombed? Is that why it's so like preserved? No, no, the it, building it was or? bombed. It was bombed towards the end of the war. It was bombed oh, heavily, okay. and and uh, uh, the the Opera House, for instance, that yeah. you see today. Was, uh, was just was completely uh, burnt out and bombed. Oh, so they just uh, rebuilt the, the Saint, it. With, Saint, Saint yeah. Stephen's Cathedral was, I think, uh, was was severely damaged too. A lot, a lot of Vienna was damaged. But so when they, they rebuilt they, it, they, they, they kept mm -hmm. the sensibility of the old architecture and stuff. Then I guess they they, right? they, yeah. they they just rebuilt it. The, the, the ah. Saint Stephen's Cathedral, which is a major landmark, yeah, uh, yeah. one of the, I forgot. Saint um, that was um, sorry, uh, my ears, my ears not not retaining the the, the earbuds. Um, the, St. Stephen's Cathedral was 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 completely reconstructed as it had been, yeah. more or less, and it was it was part of re-establishing Austria's identity, partly because they they didn't like being seen as Germans anymore. Yeah, so is there you went back, right of, uh, you went back right to your Austrian roots? Is there a bit of uh, nationalism going on in uh, Austria at the moment? I, I'll tell you where I, I get this from because the whole world's going through this bit of like people just mm -hmm. puffing their chest up at the moment. Um, we went to get our maybe our sixth or seventh sausage of the day, <laughs> right? Where, and I was like, I'll have it without the bun, just where they give you a little wooden fork and a bit of mayonnaise and mustard and ketchup on the side, and you have it have a dip. And there was this, yeah, the bun is unnecessary after a while, isn't it? Really? After a while, yeah. after a while, yeah. after your yeah. sixth one of the day, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, and and I was having a Kaiser Scheit and whatever the one Kaiser Crane, Kaiser Crane. And there was a German bloke. Kieserkleiner. 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 There was a, oh, that, that fucking meatloaf they sliced, it's just like bologna. Ham. That's no good. It's like bologna. Yeah. That's no good. Amos, like Amos was having it and acting like he was enjoying it, but he wasn't. Yeah. Anyway. Well, labor case. Yeah, yeah labor case. Yeah. Liver <laughs> cheese has its translation. Labor yes. case. Liver cheese? Oh. Liver case. Labor case, yeah. Anyway, so there was a German bloke, <laughs> an Austrian bloke, and he'd ordered his sausage. And he was sitting there just eating it on the little panel. Oh, thing. yeah, late at night. And he was talking yeah. to the bloke like this. Like this, right? And we're just like sitting there. Thinking, and what he was saying is, fucking Americans. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Amos was trying to talk to him because he knows some German. And he thought he was like, oh, I'll be friendly with this yeah, guy. Amos yeah. was yeah. like this. Guten Tag, mein <laughs> hyphen dog. Like that, right? And this guy and was this like, guy's I like, hate all of you. Fucking Americans. <laughs> and he like, Amos is Australian. He's like, fucking American. And the guy who was like, and the guy who was serving us the, the hot dog, who I don't even think was Austrian born, but, you know, he, had, he knew the language, was like, oh, well, you know, what are you going to do? And then the guy leaves and he's like, he did not like you. <laughs> he didn't he like any didn't, of us. Uh, he, he said, uh, fucking this, fucking that, not big fan of you guys. <laughs> But he was um, just like a drunk, fat fuck. Yeah, he was yeah, just yeah. Like, like, you know these people who, who like hate tourism in their town? Yeah. yeah. Fucking tourists. You want tourists. We're in the middle of Vienna. You want yeah, tourists. Right you want middle. people. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I get so proud when I see people taking photos in front of the opera house. I think, wonderful. 
People have travelled all the world. I get to see this every fucking day if I want. And you've come and you look at it. When I see people at the Chinese theatre putting their hands in the fucking concrete, I'm like, brilliant. That's what it's meant to fucking do. Yeah. It's yeah. meant to bring people to come and look at this shit. Yeah. Taxes. Um, yeah. Cultural. Uh, yes, but yes, there is a lot of nationalism in Austria at the moment. Oh, yeah, um, because they, they don't like... For, they, they, they like... they like Generally speaking, they like, they like Western tourists who spend lots of money. Uh, that kind of tour, foreigners, they don't mind. Mm. Except for the except for the fat the fat men you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it wasn't like there was a line um, but, for the dog. He got his sausage really right away. Like Muslims? <laughs> they don't like Muslims. No. Think back to 1683, and yeah. they don't like um, they don't like what they. What, uh, there's a really nasty word they used to have for, called chusion, which is people from Southeast uh, Europe, i.e., any, anywhere to the south and east of where Austria is. Mm. They, they were um, they were regarded as, um, and and if and if you think that chusion sounds a bit like Juden. You'd probably be right. You know, so, I don't know so what you'd mean. What is Juden? It does some, sound like you. I don't know what Juden means, but I know Jack's one. <laughs> What's Juden? <laughs> Have I just said the N word in German? Okay, Ju Ju you Ju assholes. <laughs> <laughs> what does Juden mean? I'm looking it up. Um, oh, 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 oh. Forrest has just turned pale. Get your apology <laughs> ready, Jim. <laughs> and his, his computer's just shut his sh shooting steam out the side no, of it. No. <laughs> I didn't no, no. know there was such a bad word. No, this is just something in Tibetan. I don't it's think Jews. it's a turquoise. It's Jews, guys. Oh. Oh. Got it. I, this is a yeah. Jack's not guy. one. Okay. <laughs> Thank Got you, it. Jim. Um, well, nothing wrong if you were. <laughs> how, how did Austria contribute to the cultural and intellectual developments of Europe? Jim said Mozart, of course. Mozart chocolate sucks. Yeah, weed the Mo stores suck. <laughs> the, Mozart, the Mozart chocolate sucks. The weed stores are fucking, just get over it. Just get, get moving, Vienna. Like this facade. Clearly they're selling weed in there. Yeah, it was good. The, the edibles were good. It was good. We got fucked up in Vienna. Yeah, we I remember we, we were really high in Vienna. We were like, you want to know why they were good? Because we didn't know whether it would work, so we took tons of them. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what it was. <laughs> but we were walking through the streets, going to the museums, like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Americans. <laughs> 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 Trying to speak to fat Germans eating a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> that guy gave you a hat. Ah! Oh, what? Okay, so, okay, this is so weird, right? <laughs> We're walking down the street. No, we came out of the escape room. We went to an yeah, escape. Yeah. We were there for like three days, four days. And yeah. one day, just to pass a bit of time, we went to an escape room. We come out of the escape room. And we're walking past a hat store. <laughs> and a guy in the hat store fucking runs out like, oh, my God, gun control? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. He was from, I forget where he was from. He wasn't even Austrian. He wasn't Austrian. He was from, I forget where he was from. But anyway. So, so he sold us hats that were like real, like if we were wearing leader hats. He gave you hats. Yeah, he gave us hats. He, right? got, he goes, I want to give you a hat to Jim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Amos, he wanted to give Amos me a hat. wore one the whole time. And, I, and Amos was there just trying, can I have this one? And the guy's like, sure. At the very end, he goes, oh, yeah, let me put this hat back. I know what Amos did. I didn't put a hat on at all. But then Amos had a hat on the whole time. He goes, oh, wait, I got to put this back and the guy was like yeah i guess you can have it like I, he was doing I, that thing yeah, yeah, yeah. i got one hat but it looks it looks I, whenever i wear it it looks a bit like a burt, burt kreischer wears these type of hats it's right? like a you know, fedora kind yeah, of thing. fedora type you thing. wore it for like three days i wore it for like three days but if i you know if i, I can't wear it without my shirt on yeah <laughs> it looks too much like burt <laughs> um but but I, I looked at it, it had a little stitching in the thing and it looked like a real umpa type of hat yeah right? real umpa type of hat and umpa, uh, yeah, um, umpa music, umpa, pa, umpa, pa, that's how it goes from the movie Oliver, you dickhead. All right. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> but the umpa music, it's the beer hall music, okay. right? And uh, uh, I wore it, all, but I, I, me and me and Amos must have looked like the biggest cunts in the fucking country. I, I have pictures of you because somewhere. it's not like I'll, we tried to, to learn somewhere. the language, and we both have thick Australian accents. Just, <laughs> but we look super. Anyway, I got all the way home, and then I, I showed it to my wife, and I said, "This is a traditional Austrian hat." And she she uh, she pulls it off, looks at the tag, and goes, "Made in Austin." Austin, Texas? Yeah, yeah, it was made in Austin, Texas. Oh my god! And I got it, I got it in Austin, I got it in Vienna, and I thought I was a real Viennese <laughs> or a Viet Cong, as they might be called. No one, we haven't figured this out yet. <laughs> yeah, I have a. I'll send you a picture of it. Uh, so, other, uh, what are other people besides Mozart, or what was cultural and appropriation back in the day of Europe, Stephen? <laughs> what, what were some of the things that Austin? You can't have little moustache. Well, uh, well, there's, there's, 
um, uh, Vienna around 1900, uh, as you as you would learn if you read my book on Vienna and the Jews, um, is was best um, band of all time. Had all kinds of things going on. So there's Freud and psychoanalysis. There's there's Mahler and Schoenberg and, and modern music. There there is uh, there is there is the uh, there is the art, the secession art movement of Gustav Klimt. Uh, and then, then later on, Oscar Kokos and Egon, Egon Schiller, kind of expressionist, expressionists. There's uh, Max Reinhardt, the, the theatre director. A, a lot of, quite a few people who, who ended up in in Hollywood came from Vienna at, at, uh, around the turn of the century. Oscar Schindler uh, was he? Uh, well, was he I, Austrian? I think I, I, I'm not. I think he, he may have been. I'm not. I'm not sure. Because because the other the other trouble is that there were lots of Aust- Austrians who were who were in the in the SS and so on and so forth. So that's the other side of it. Um, oh, yeah, no, it, it, it is, it is a, one of the things about Vienna at the turn of the century, as the title of my book would suggest, is it's a remarkable how many of the, the main major figures in this in, in intellectual and cultural kind of uh, uh, achievement uh, were, were Jewish. It's a very strange kind of um, thing. I mean, it's, a bit like, it's a bit like New York to some extent. Um, so, I... Go ahead. But there were lots. There were lots of Austrians uh, who who played a, um, a significant role in in modern modern culture and uh, and thought. Um, uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein is is maybe maybe one of the most famous. We didn't ask about Vienna Secession art movement, but is that important? Because I didn't even. Yeah. I what? um it, 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 I like I like it Austrian depends. and German porn. <laughs> I've always been a big fan. Well, well my, so so my favorite the, actor the is Wolfgang is Bang. Egypt. Because, <laughs> because Gustav Klimt and uh, Egon Schiele were famous for their nudes and, and oh, yeah. their erotic. Yeah, yeah. Do, you, do they? Do so they have the? Do they have the, sh- uh, the the shit shelf where you poo? They do in Austria. The Germans <laughs> and the Austrians have this. If you've never been, oh yeah, yeah. There's the picture. Yeah, I sent it to Jack. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but, I can't but, see it. It's too but, far away. Yeah, I'll hold it up over yeah. here. Yeah, there's there's a. Uh, there's two more handsome men in, in Vienna, Germany. in the streets of Vienna. Look at that, in the streets of Vienna, wearing our hats that were made in Austin, Texas. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, good look. But that guy, I've forgotten his name, but thanks for the hat, man. I look quite handsome there. I should wear hats more often. <laughs> well, um, you all you have to do is go to Austin. So you know. yeah, 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 true. I still got that hat, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, sometimes I wear it shirtless and I shag my wife so when she calls me the machine. So Vienna Secession Art Movement, I, I think we were talking about that. but Yes, yes. Yeah, you talked about that. You oh, all, sorry. All Jewish people did so, good uh, things. Ah, yeah, sorry. I, I, I was obsessed oh, with that. Well, well, uh, do you know there was, that, there was that big controversy about the, 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 the lady, in, the, the, the woman in gold? Lady in What's gold. That? No, that's that's different. That's different, Jim. <laughs> oh, she, oh, she was one of those statues where if you gave her a, a nickel, she moved slightly. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, some people. Some people thought she was gold. Some people thought she was blue. Those, yeah, 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 those, those so. people who do that statue. I hope you all get some type of paint poisoning through your skin. Why? Why? <laughs> Fucking get a job. I don't think you have to hope for it. I think they do. <laughs> get get a job. What's the lady in gold? Um, this is a fam- famous um, famous portrait uh, by Gustav Klimt uh, oh, of, of yeah, yeah, a yeah, lady yeah. called Adele Blochbauer, who, who was who was the wife of a very 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 rich J- Jewish industrialist and one of one of the secession's ma- main um, patrons. When 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 the mm. Anschluss happened and 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 the uh, and the and the Jews were, uh, were 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 chucked out or killed, uh, the the, the the, the Nazis actually liked Klimt, right? They liked the art of Klimt, and they liked this portrait, but they couldn't have a portrait called Portrait of Adele Blochbauer, so they called her Portrait of a, of a Lady in Gold. Mm. And, oh. then, and then after the war, um, the painting was still, the Nazis had gone, but the painting was still there, and it was still called The Lady in Gold. Is everybody- because the Austrians didn't really want to know about the Jewish side of the, to their history. So it was Lady in Gold until basically the 1970s. This is off, then, the t- off the topic, but on the topic, right? Has everyone seen the painting that was found in Jeffrey Epstein's house of Bill Clinton in a dress? No. What? This is a real thing. <laughs> Bill Clinton and him were such good mates that there was an in-joke, right? Or it might have even been on the island. Put Bill Clinton dress Epstein. Yeah, got it. Right? It won't take long to find. Oh, yeah. 
That's a painting. It looks like it's a it's, it's a really, hyper realistic. It's yeah. a really good painting. Yeah, it's, it's a really good it's painting. Got nice calves. Good God! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, he's on the flight schedule. He's he's on worse than that. <laughs> he's in a painting in a dress in Epstein's house. Like if if there was one painting of Forrest in a dress, you want to hope it's in my house, right? Not like in like some random home. That would be sick. You'd have to be good friends. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> Boy, it's, it gets weirder because there's a photo of Hillary in that same dress. Oh. Yeah, I think that was part of the gag. I'm just yeah, giving you more information. Yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. was part of the gag. I don't know that dress. I don't know the dress either, but I'm just saying that <laughs> that, that that was a bit of fun, isn't it? <laughs> it is fun. Um, last question we had. <laughs> like, I'd like that painting. <laughs> Last question. I'd like to hang that painting up in your house. It's It'd be awesome. such a talking point. That's a great Put it painting. right next to your Ken Doan. How'd you get it? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you, will never, you will never know. Last question. How has Austria's well, position... Very in, nice. Yes. In, in, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> and he's like, hey, hey, hey. What are you up to, Jeffrey? Hey, yeah, you over a, there. He's got his wedding ring on. You over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tits aren't anyway, great. Anyway, yes. Yeah. Tits aren't great. Yeah. That was that was Forrest. That was Forrest's takeaway. Mate, that was probably painted when he became vegan. And, and they deflated. Back in the day when he was a media, he had a lovely set of norks yeah. on him. From McDonald's. Uh, how has Austria's position in Europe evolved over time? Uh, Jim said they got away with murder. We've discussed that a little bit. But yeah. how, well, how has it evolved yeah. over time? Yeah. I gave him 10 on that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but but uh, I tell you, I tell you, Austria is one of the most annoying countries to, to write a history of because you know, if you write a history of America, mm. there hasn't. I mean, it's only been around for a couple of hundred years. You can like, do a history of Australia important. in a pamphlet. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, 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 and even then, you have to stretch Austria, some of it. Austria, it goes back <laughs> over five hundred years, Jim. Over five hundred years, it goes back. And and it and it and it, it involved the ha the Habsburgs and the, and South America and, and you know and, and and Spain and most of Europe etc cetera, etc. Cetera. The the man the man who tried to invade England in 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 eight, 1588 with the Armada was an, was a Habsburg Philip II. Mm. So all 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 these kinds of things, and so it's got a huge history, and now it's a tiny little country in the middle of middle of, of Europe and it, uh, and tries tries to kind of pretend not to be there half the time. Because it's not a member of NATO, and it and it and it tries to be neutral, and you know, so yeah, it so it, 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 it does stay out it, of trouble. Ever since the Second World War, that's been their whole plan. Is like, ah, don't worry about us. Yeah, we're all right. <laughs> you like Mozart? <laughs> Cha ching. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. This is a part of our show called Dinner Party Facts. Uh, our expert gives us a fact, something obscure, interesting to impress people. Uh, about this subject, okay. you already gave us croissants, Hedy Lamar. I mean, you're killing it. You got anything else? I I think so. I think so. These 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 are pretty good ones. Okay. Um. So you 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 know you know the the the, the German car, the Mercedes car, Mercedes Benz. Mercedes Benz, yes. You, you've heard the, the, of them. The, the, they're they're the, quite the, popular, right? The engine was invented by Carl's Benz, and the Mercedes was named after the daughter of the first person to sell the vehicle. Well Co done, company. Jim. Company comes out of the small town of Stuttgart, you were saying. Yeah, yeah. But do you know, do you know who the first person was to sell the car? <laughs> uh, to sell the car. The guy whose daughter was called Mercedes. <laughs> I don't Mercedes know. That's, that's dad. Tautology, Jim. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> who no, was he, it? I tell you what. So this is it's it's rather strange given given the history of the of uh, Mercedes Benz. Um, the Mercedes is named after the the granddaughter of the chief rabbi of Vienna. Um, because the the salesman you mentioned was someone called Emil Jelinek, um, who, and the the name was trademarked in 1902. Uh, because and, and the reason why uh, Emil Jelinek got to name the, the car after after his daughter was because he'd gone around in in the south of France. Uh, he was he was a, he was a, a dedicated um, car racer, mm. or at least he had a car racing team and, under the name of Monsieur Mercedes. Ah. So the, the car became known as the Mercedes and was right. extremely successful and extremely popular. So and you know really what, when how... did the name Mercedes become a stripper's name? 
Was that before? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was after. Uh, that, that's, that's a slightly different uh, topic, I think. Uh, so mm. that's, that's interesting because they're associated with the Nazis initially, and then the a chief rabbi. They yeah, weren't as yeah. not, well. They're not. Yeah, they were. They yeah. The, the, you can even see the Mercedes um, symbol on some of the Nazis' vehicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the well, airplane. They, the they airplanes were, were made by yeah. BMW. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, the airplane. The BMW logo is propellers against the sky. Yeah, or uh, Mercedes. No, BMW. Oh, yeah, the BMW, yeah, the blue, BMW, white, the circle, blue, the blue yeah. and the white yeah. check is propellers against yeah. the sky. Whoa. Oh, okay. Right. Um, and you had That's one more, you, you said, Stephen? You had oh, one yes, more. and one more, one more. <clears throat> so um, just to show how complicated Austrian history or Austrian identity is, Ötzi, the Iceman, uh, uh, was found in the Ötztal Glacier in the Alps in 1991, and, and because German tourists who'd come from uh, Innsbruck uh, discovered it, uh, it, the the they notified the Austrian authorities first, and so the and so the the this mummy, this right, this this frozen mummy, mummified uh, uh, co corpse, was taken to Innsbruck, and they didn't know it was uh, what had happened. It had some some guy just you know fallen into the glacier and frozen to death, and so initially, um, this it, then they found out that he was three thousand years old, mm. right? This this corpse. So anyway, initially the corpse was. Uh, was thought to have been found in, in Austria. And so the Austrians made a big thing about how the oldest man ever found more or less intact was, was an Austrian, right? Mm. But then, it, then they discovered that he'd been found in a spot on the glacier, which was about a yard or so inside of Italy, mm. right? Because yeah. the glacier is a separation between Austria and Italy. The, the, so, so the, either the way, that guy Italians was a Nazi, in, right? An Italian. <laughs> the, the trouble was... Actually, actually, he was found right in the middle of Tyrol, between the main part of, of Tyrol, which is in Austria, and the southern part of Tyrol, which is, is South Tyrol, which is in Italy. Now, why is the South Tyrol in Italy? Well, that's because after the First World War, it was given by the Allies to Italy in, in the Treaty of, of Versailles, yeah. um, uh, even though it was mainly German-speaking um, and mainly, therefore, Austrian. Um, but the question is, did that make him? Does that make Ötzi a Ty Ty Tyrolean, right? Because he's found in the middle of Tyrol. Uh, ah, so is, anyway. he, is he German or Austrian? I reckon. Okay, it, yeah. it would be hard. Uh -huh. to t it would be hard to tell because they might have thought he was a Nazi because he was doing the salute, but he was just trying to climb out. <laughs> <laughs> Nazi or fascist, Jim? Uh, Nazi or fascist? Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's the the, the 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 idea that he was either he, he, you know he was Austrian or Italian or Ty Tyrolean is insane. Because yeah. he was alive three thousand years ago, yeah, right? True that. When there's neither in Italy nor in Austria, and not even a Tyrol. Yeah, so, but you know, he so the, was the, from that area. He, He's from that area. He would have. No, he what? He probably wasn't. He was probably from the Mediterranean. Sometime. Are you reckon he was holidaying? <laughs> he was. He was on a trade. He was on a trade route, uh, uh, going over the mountains. Are you reckon it was like a Greek bloke? <laughs> <laughs> How were his, eye, uh, his eyebrows? Three thousand years, years ago. You know? yeah, yeah, they, they, think he's, they think he's a three thousand year old man, but it turns out he's just two hundred year old Greek person. <laughs> <laughs> we found the missing link. No, he's just Greek. Ah. Oh. <laughs> um, well, Stephen, uh, Stephen Beller, thank you for being here again. If you want to learn more about Austria, check out his book, A Concise History of Austria. And he's got many other books. Vienna and the Jews, as Jim loves that one. Um, yeah. Favorite band. Greatest hits album um, is one of the classics. Anti-Semitism, <laughs> a very short introduction. Uh, Democracy, All That Matters. And uh, uh, Rethinking Vienna, which is an anthology in his latest book, The Habsburg Monarchy. Uh, thanks so much for being here, Stephen. Steve. Thank you. It was, it was a blast. Stephen, man, we had, we had a real good laugh. I think that's the first time we've just done a country. Yeah, I We could so. do more countries. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Ah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Very good. If if you're ever at a party and someone comes up to you and goes, uh, "Hitler, he was a German," go, "I don't know about that," and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> United Australia.